technological assistance to industries on the latest policy changes concerning industries and members of International Advisory Board of the Center for Common Law in Europe, UCD Sutherland School, Ireland, to facilitate creation of research platform whose outreach extends to universities and research centers located in other common law jurisdictions. She has been awarded the honorary membership of Association of Young International Criminal Lawyer and has been applauded for her efforts in incorporation of academic quality, innovative latest legal research and curriculum, interaction with judges, lawyers, and interdisciplinary legal experts for lecture delivery, new projects, and grants from national and international agency, RACO with industry and legal systems of India. We welcome you, ma'am, and it's a pleasure for us to have you amongst us today. Good morning, one and all. I hope you can hear me very clearly. Yeah. So very nice to uh, have our respectful uh, philosopher, guide, mentor, Professor Subramanian, sir. Good morning to you, sir. And to all the team, uh, the director and others, as well as those who have joined off online. So today's uh, session will begin now, which is about academic writing. Uh, I want to know in the beginning, how many of you have already published? How many? Uh, I would say majority of you or a few of you. What hesitate? What is causing the hesitation in publishing? Uh, is there any one of you who is into literary means uh, uh, literature writing? Anybody from the literature background or one who is into journalistic background? who writes blogs or who writes uh, news items, who writes opinions, perspectives, anybody? So that means most of you are, I'm sure to reach this level as professors or as researchers, you would have done some writing, right? Right from LLB these days, leading law schools encourage <clears throat> what we call assignment writing, am I right? Or project writing in national law school, they call it as project writing. So these, uh, will give you some uh, insight on how to write and what to write, how to structure your writing. Today's present uh, discussion with me is about how general writing and academic writing are distinct. And I will give you a little insight on different types of legal academic writing. Uh, so some of you might be people in the legal institution, but you may not be coming from the law background. But uh, most of you are, I'm sure, from the law background. So one of the things that in India, in Indian education system, that we lack is inculcating writing habit or inculcating writing as a skill. Of course, uh, Indians are great creators of literature. I mean, our Vedas and Vedanta, if you see, uh, thousand lives and lifetimes are not enough to master one point in Vedas and Vedantas. I'm saying not simply reading and listening, but uh, mastering. So such is the vastness and depth and the uh, uh, and the complexity of the knowledge system that we have created. But all these knowledge systems, although they existed in writing before the advent of the paper, our whole tradition has been Shruti and Smriti in the voice of the guru in the presence of the guru we heard and then we practiced it and then we reproduced it many a times we tapped on higher capacities of the brain which also in a way neural network detected the next line and it added that's how you have so many interpreters so many versions which are coming but we, we usually went in a circle. We did not break that into a 3D effect like how the Westerners have done in terms of communicating it to the larger milieu, but we preserved that knowledge system for centuries. So converting that into our current reality in our education system, writing is encouraged, writing is expected. But if you look at the way in which we judge our children, we always judge them by the scores they achieve at the term and examination, semester and year end examination. Our universities have given emphasis to internal assessment, yes, but that also we convert into an examination only by midterm examination, etc. Now, this is one thing that we need to outgrow. We have to look at our students as people who generate knowledge along with us because we are no more in the old system 
where teacher and taught relationship was hierarchical where we were considered as the fountain and repository of knowledge and we were uh, didactically means in lecture method trans transacting that knowledge to the students we have entered an era where your student has equal access to knowledge no more the teacher is the repository still the role of the teacher is there in organizing this knowledge in making it to be digestible to the student uh, that i don't deny teacher still has a role but a time may come when teacher may become outdated therefore we should be ready for such a day especially you younger people where you are no more the knowledge giver but you are co producer of knowledge co creator of knowledge with the students what does that mean that means your assessment method to a greater degree should accommodate the uh, writing skills to the students uh, research writing uh, research writing is a little bit different which we are going to see i mean which we call as academic writing uh, but before that writing skills per se so within the colleges we encourage these co curricular activities like debating short story writing essay writing uh, uh, essay, etc but when we get into academic writing it's a little bit different i mean not little bit it's way way different because we are entering into a very systematic knowledge creation uh, realm so uh, what are the requisites of that how is that different from uh, our normal exercise of writing and how in legal writing uh, or combined writing in the legal and non legal field uh, related to law i would use the word pre legal or uh, interdisciplinary legal field it has become relevant with the example methodology as well but not simply knowing the methodology but translating it into a form of knowledge clear outcome writing is one thing which shows the outcome uh, i remember our late professor raja used to say uh, from mysore the dean of mysore university where uh, myself professor subramanian etc were graduating sir used to say that we have great knowledge system we have great capacity great heritage but we always kept it at conjecture he used to say means concrete formulation of that knowledge uh, like how if you read legal theories how concretely they are developing that theory jurisprudential theories uh, the, the so called theories about law or if you look at the way they construct the concepts but i will be you will be surprised to know we have now developed a module called 21st century teach skills which is a module for teachers we are training our students now we will be training our teachers we have already trained a handful of teachers there you will be surprised to know we have one uh three lecture component on indian knowledge system and indian ways of knowing you won't believe compared to the western ways of knowing indian ways of knowing is 70 times complex and it is much more structured it got lost in these shastras as my professor used to say in the conjectural one when you bring it down to this experiment observation inference kind of approach indian approaches have been much more clear at the higher level you know the difference the western ways of knowing were more into empirical sense based ways of knowing indian ways of knowing was always looked at from the point of view of reaching the ultimate purpose of life which is spiritual experience and spiritual union with god so there the dimensions of the mind opened in different ways and beyond mind these authors went therefore when you are talking about a concept of truth the west has reached now in terms of uh, one way of knowing and uh, challenging that way of knowing in post modernism because till modernism that way of knowing was more into empiricism and then in uh, post modernism it went one step further it challenged that empirical way of knowing by saying that objectivity can also be subjective so this is where they started challenging science they started uh, various truths they called them as they can't be ultimate truths they are only truth claims whereas our vedanta spoke about truth in a very different way different scholars at different points interpreted these ways of knowing uh, rather than the truth itself so this is where i mean they never touched the truth they talked about the ways of approaching this truth 
who is more liberal and who is more deep who has got more complex ways of approaching only thing is how do we convert it into methodology how do we inculcate this art and the urge to write is the challenge so we, we teachers we we find it very easy to pick a textbook organize those thoughts into a piece of paper or in a ppt and then come and talk to students after that we also forget our students also forget but reflecting on what we have thought and writing about it for example in my class i taught a concept whether in a class of 60 whether all 60 received it in the same way the way i uh, taught they don't at least 10% 5 to 10% of the students will challenge you they will question you and today that has become more because they some of them would have read and come to the class that's why we have this flipped classroom method where we give the reading now with the covid we had to they had to read on their own because we couldn't conduct three lectures from the health point of view we did only two lectures or one lecture and exposure to online cannot be more than one and a half hours to two hours at a time so with all those scientific bases we used to send them advance reading and then after the class post class work or reading that means we engaged them in learning in self learning so academic writing uh, needs this kind of a paradigm shift in the understanding of the teacher of their role and teacher forever is a scholar teachers scholarship does not stop it grows and converting these into writing is very very important now with the nac we have come to an era where we have to maintain our teaching dockets and things like that so we are into writing but building on that knowledge system as you are teaching uh, if you are reading more you will have uh, insights on how limited is the knowledge you are uh, transacting in the class and what is the possibility what new developments have come i'm sure you are updating your case laws legislation etc but more than that there is one more thing that is reflection on what you are teaching now that reflection comes if you are making it a habit to write down and once you write down you know then you start seeing the pattern in the teaching plan you used last year and the teaching plan you are using this year and something new is there and if you ask a question why this new what is this new your material for writing has started there but how many times do we do this that's why when i asked how many of you are into writing uh, nobody was able to clearly say that they are into writing but they have written for example undergraduate assignments are very good sources you have generated those with your students if your college has that approach second is your llm dissertation third is some of you have already done phd or pursuing phd during the course of phd you come across certain ancillary materials which may not be core to your hypothesis or research question those are the areas of writing so there are many ways of discovering this writing so i gave you general background now let me take you through the a structured presentation on this i hope all of you can see yeah uh, so uh, i will start with this idea of academic writing now i asked you how many of you are into writing and academic writing none of you answered but i i am sure that you would have done the writing you are a little shy or you don't want to interrupt the flow uh, then we come to the idea Uh, which i have subsumed into a short slide on uh, the approaches in developing academic writing as research writing and then the types of academic writing and articles also types of articles and how do we structure the article a template for the article and then what is the publishing process and a little bit of summary i was just telling you about general writing and there is also something called free writing have you come across uh, this uh, free writing idea what is the difference between writing free writing and academic writing uh, i will give you an exercise now uh, take out your uh, uh, paper and pen I, i saw some of you writing also or if you have a laptop or mobile phone i would like you to uh, write 50 words immediately Uh, without lifting your pen or without stopping typing on the word what i remember the most or you can even uh, yeah this is the first one 
for uh, for let us say five minutes, five to ten minutes. Now it is uh, nine forty-five. What I remember the most, or what I cannot forget, is that clear to all of you? Uh, without lifting your pen or without stopping typing, just write. So I'll uh, say when I say stop, you stop. uh so how many of you all of you wrote without stopping right for 2 minutes and uh, what did you write would you like to read out uh, what i there i got the most is an interesting idea to ponder upon i came across this idea in my session so what i remember the most is to be in connection with myself that energy keeps popping up once in a while Ended up with higher self. Now, uh, how that higher self could be beneficial to me is another thing. Thank you. Did you write without stopping? Yes, ma'am. So when you were writing, uh, I mean, what do you teach? Sorry, ma'am. What, do you, what do you teach? Uh, ma'am, criminal law and environment law. Uh, okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Anybody else wants to add? I'll tell you why. what you have written whatever you have written is sacred because that is your personal uh, world you have unveiled through writing yeah yes please yeah what i remember the most are the days that i spent at kochin university for my pg course it was the very first time that i experienced a hostel life sharing stay sharing and caring with friends the time to learn to be independent these were the days when life taught me to be responsible thank you very much so we we have had what do you teach madam math human law and constitution okay so you both are law teachers uh, each one's universe is very very sacred and unique and uh, beautiful and at the same time what you realize is that i want to ask you both when you were writing uh, did you feel at some stage it was happening effortlessly both of you had that experience yes yes so who was doing that writing this is called tapping on the subconscious so the minute you get into writing as an experience of tapping on the subconscious your job is done so whenever you are writing an article making your phd whenever you are doing any of your activities uh, we use these techniques to uh, overcome what we call writer's block sometimes you feel like not looking at that piece at all you want to run away because we are all from the forest we don't like this structured sitting to uh, sitting in one place and doing same job day and in and day out because we are also wild like animals so disciplining our mind requires to understand our mind and then to see how uh, we are trained is uh, we always learn from the nature with our five sense experience sitting and writing is that relationship with that pen and paper or your technology which you are using to type so orienting the mind away from all of this and then tapping on your experience which may be interfering with your uh, way of uh, way of uh, organizing yourself and disciplining yourself is overcome by engaging he said that i am engaging with my higher self and she said she drew on a memory so memories Uh, then self uh, reflection so this is how we inculcate or encourage the art of self reflection and this i mean we did this exercise after that majority of our faculty started publishing we did for a long time but today's session we have limited time because we have to know other facets also so let me give you second exercise which is most of us when we wake up we forget the dream that we had okay what we dreamt in the night so can you remember one dream uh, quietly and uh, your time starts now 2 minutes i'll give you remember a dream this time somebody else will reply don't be shy just recall a dream and stop when i ask you to stop minutes so are you done 
some of you are done so uh, this time new people so tell me one of you can read out what you have written did you find it difficult to remember the dream because most of the time dreams evaporate when we wake up but i'm sure some dreams you don't uh, forget at all right uh, premonitional dreams happy dreams etc so whatever sometimes they call it as lucid dreams where uh, one day you dream and next day that sequence continues for some people these kinds of dreams also come so i mean on the humorous side uh, sometimes we dictate our dreams also we want to dream what we want, desire right uh, sometimes disappointing dreams also come so uh, anybody who has written can you share yeah please yeah yeah and i dream that i revisited my childhood that too in my grandma's place but i had the presence of all the relatives that i got even post college it was like some celebration i was so busy running here and there with happy face with my childhood happiness passing on food items serving to all sitting and chatting watching movie with all the people i woke up with a lot of happiness that day so there are two things in the dream uh, you were describing the people and you described the feeling which you got after the dream your feeling in the dream also was similar yeah so that is about the uh, bolts and nuts of the dream but what we are trying to do with this i'll tell later one more sample please one more there is no shyness about our world yes yes uh, we will give chance to third one also yeah yeah i yeah. thought that my nightmare so exactly in my dream i was in exam hall so a sheet paper was given so when i started to write my paper was not writing so finally i asked the editor so with the help of the editor i got new pens and i started to write and within no time there was an announcement from the editor that Ten minutes it took for the completion of the examination, and I'm still writing. So I looked into the question paper. It was like only one side, one side I finished, and few more questions to attend. And uh, again, the announcement like exam not over. He took pen down, and uh, I'm still writing. Timer, and uh, finally. The invigilator flashed my answer booklet, and I suddenly wake up from my dream. So it is very good. Thank you. Anyone else? There's one more uh, respondent. So uh, uh, see, what you dreamt is not important for us here. It is that you are tapping on your dream. It, the dream might be many years old. Dream might be just recent, but you are tapping on that dream. You have to recall that dream. When you were recalling that dream and writing, did you feel? My question is, did you uh, experience that at some stage you were not writing? Writing was happening. Did both of you feel that? Did rest of you feel that? Because the condition was you don't stop writing. Okay. you don't uh, you you don't lift your pen or you don't stop typing that means you are orienting yourself to that flow which converts from your mind level to the writing level many people in their childhood they are excellent in uh, class presentations but you ask them to write they can't structure their thought similarly there are many in the class who write well but they can't speak well so tapping the source of expression and overcoming that block of expression blocks in expression is the aim of this exercise it also there is another beauty about it that it also unveils what is bothering you like i was doing a children's camp uh, this was 2004 20 years ago in chitradurga so there were 50 little children from high school and i asked them to uh, recall what they want to forget the most 
So all children wrote, I want to forget the most that I scored less in the exam or the mother beat me, teacher beat me. So they wanted to forget all of that, which are all negative behaviors, sir, which currently law is taking care. But there was one child who wrote about what he witnessed when he was going to school. He saw a man being ripped into pieces by police shootout. So that child had written the lengthiest piece. So that child was becoming dull in the class, then the teacher told. So after this experience, in that class itself, his behavior had drastically changed. So this free writing concept has evolved as a concept of empowerment, self-empowerment. It is overcoming the blocks, emotional blocks, experiential blocks. It's about the ability to express through writing what you cannot express in public or what you cannot express in speech. It also helps you to uh, know yourself, your deeper layers better. So from our purpose of performing well as uh, scholars and writers, performing the capacity to express and uh, document our knowledge, free writing becomes a stepping stone. So once you are able to write, whatever it is, that's why we call it free writing. Once you are able to write, based on the memory which is trapped in your mind, it could be bothering you or it could be trapped in the mind. Daily, if you do morning 10 to 20 minutes of such writing, maintain a journal, thought journal, dream journal, maintain your, I mean, maintain some kind of uh, uh, stray thoughts. Even in your computer, you maintain a folder. So this is how slowly, slowly you get into the discipline of writing. If you look at all the great authors, they all have very disciplined life of writing at least four to five hours. Virappa Moili, for example, 80 plus, still writes. He has published Mahakavyas, epics, which are to the tune of 3,000, 4,000 pages. Two, three he has written. He has authored stories which have become films. Very good, very good stories. So uh, it is because of that. Imagine being a politician, if he can do that, as professors, we can, because their people are always disturbing. There is no structured work environment. Why can't we do as professors is the question, because we are so fortunate to be in the scholarly world, surrounded by people who think. That's why it's very important that you individually and collectively maintain an ecosystem which discusses ideas and not things and people. So that ecosystem is the onus of each one of us, how much ever our dean and principal struggle. It's, uh, it's uh, us choosing uh, something which aligns with the choice we have made in the profession. That is one aspect. But coming back to what you have written, for example, if you had more time, you would have said the colors in the dream, which all colors you saw, dark color, brown color, green color, that is one. So it explains that dream to a blind person. Or uh, uh, if you are talking about that dream in a musical fashion, how you will talk about it. So we have this um, uh, in yoga and other uh, knowledge systems in India that what is said should be, what is heard should be seen, what is seen should be heard. So transcending between senses. So when I write, if I am able to show through writing, what is the difference between Arundhati Nair's Arundhati, uh, Arundhati's writing? She's Arundhati uh, Ghosh, right? Arundhati Roy. Arundhati Roy's writing and Jumpal Iris writing, if you are a person of literature. Arundhati Roy uses a distinct style. She has discovered her tone. From somewhere she gets these words. Each word has got a story behind it. She tells while talking about somebody who has abused the environment as Rimpel still skin. Now, Rimpel still skin is a character in the Italian uh, Roman epics uh, in comedy. He's the guy who dances and produces something from the universe. So one imagery, one word she uses, but behind that word, there is there is so much of world that she unveils. So she has discovered that kind of a distinct style, which is a showing style. It is, it is like reading, it is not reading words, it's reading a uh, painting. So writing to demonstrate, writing to show. Tell me in the legal field who writes like this. In India, there is one guy, Upendra Bakshi, 
every time he he you can use the word spins words they say mincing but i would use the word he spins words appropriate words or uh, great authors are always good at this you know it comes i mean anybody can be great author in my opinion there's nothing we in india we worship everybody who shows such uh, capacities there's nothing super about any super human being the difference is that they have worked on that for a minimum of 10000 hours we have not in now today onwards you dedicate 10000 hours you may cover it in one year or 10 years and you see how good a writer you will be i challenge if you cover that 10000 hours in one year you will see a miracle so it's all genius is all about as thomas alva edison said 99% perspiration 1% inspiration so coming back to our writer's capacity that's what i am going to unveil before you from free writing to academic writing free writing to writing now one more example from arundhati roy i want to give is when she challenged this uh, nba uh, narmada uh, narmada authority and narmada project she used a word we all as lawyers spoke about common good benthamite concept she used this uh, word does anybody remember greater common good she said what is the greater common good it's not common good among many common goods if i were to choose a greater common good if you were saying building a dam is a common good what would be greater common good not to hurt those tribals who have their life base in the river basin area from where they are getting displaced so she challenged the jurisprudential construct that is the power of reflective critical and metacognitive thinking so this kind of uh, and then expressing it in a very uh, reachable way greater com and none of her sentences go beyond four words see these these i can give you about writing the whole day but i am just giving you glim giving you glimpses and i want you to always pre, uh, keep your own list of your favorite writers suppose you are writing in the area of law who are your favorite writers your favorite writer is not chosen by what you like in terms of substance of writing but it could be substance style approach and the visibility who do i give you as example you look at uh, this guy cass sunstein who is this guy this guy is a harvard professor cass sunstein and cass sunstein has got 5000 citations to his credit which is much more than our bharat ratna scientist and this is purely in the field of law how was he capable of doing this he writes like a machine every other day there is some great article he has produced in not in ordinary newspapers and blogs he has written always in columbia yale stanford harvard what has he written he has written on everything cyber law he has written on uh, let us say data privacy gdpr he has written on uh, internet technology iot of things but the fulcrum all these wheels are revolving around one fulcrum the centerpiece what is that democracy freedom rule of law human rights these are called evergreen areas you can link any field of law to that that's why people who write in these areas or now the climate justice and one these are the areas which are meaningful existence related areas they will never become outdated as long as civilization is on this earth and human existence is on this earth these are the core so use them as grounded concepts and then you start dissecting other developments around that that's what he does he may be reviewing a statute he may be reviewing a case law he may be reviewing he, he has identified his tone his voice so discovering our voice our style and our approach is very important let me give you a second example i don't think anybody matches up to sunstein but uh, we have great number of feminist writers among these feminist writers uh, i mean i wouldn't uh, limit her to feminism but a great scholar road deborah road 
Deborah Road, anybody, if any one of you has read, she has written a piece called Subtle Sexism. This subtle sexism is a very, very critical piece where she shows how women are pitted against women in the great struggle for gender equality. For example, fat woman versus the thin woman, white woman versus the black woman. So by defining codes of acceptability, appearance biases and uh, discrimination, she uses how uh, and the fertile woman versus the non-fertile woman, which means woman in the childbearing age group versus the woman who is superannuated. So the acceptability of woman as a body, young body, uh, so-called good looking, fair body, thin body. So body politics, the entire body politics she challenges and she has written this piece on, it is available on Google, subtle sexism. She has written it for American Bar Association. How sexism openly is about men and women, but in a subtle level, it's about good women and bad women. If you, you, you use that core theory and you start looking at social aspect, family aspect, employment aspect, public relations aspect. Women who are willing to be uncritical about gender inequality are the women who may reach the top faster. And women who are critical of this and engage with that critical voice may not grow much because the dominant forces in the society, the power play, may not appreciate them. That's what she calls that subtle sexism. So she takes case laws. For example, a woman who was fired because she gained weight. Now that is a kind of body shaming, right? And appearance bias. So Deborah Rod uh, successfully fights her case. And she says that scientifically, this is indifferent to the way the hormonal changes happen in the female body after childbearing or after reaching certain years, invariably thyroid and other problems. And uh, thereby limiting their uh, capability to their physical changes is uh, unfair. So she was able to get compensation for this lady. So uh, there are other areas also where uh, forcibly they make them uh, do the, what we call as uh, uh, the body politics of uh, slimness for in the fashion industry. To stay slim, the slimness is a huge industry, billion dollar industry. It's a because of the subtle sexism only. And it is not only for women, I mean, if you were to develop your theory beyond Deborah Rohr, subtle sexism to men also, I think it applies to men also. It applies to LGBT also because they don't fit into the stereotype. So this is, this is the kind of thought process that is there in academic writing where you develop, you see a pattern between the facts and then you discover that pattern and then you develop an argument for that or proposition for that you make that proposition as a problem. So we begin our research with the problem. So academic writing closely is bound up with the research methodology. And the logic that is there in research methodology, in critical thinking, critical thinking is evaluative, metacognitive, standing away from the phenomenon and watching kind of thinking. So how academic writing is this kind of exercise and what are the different nuances within the limitation of time, I would like to navigate through that. So bear with me. Now, can you see this slide? All of you? Yeah. Now, uh, we finished that distinction between free writing and oh, academic. Can you, see the slide? Uh, can you do uh, legal research? I mean, first of all, how do you go about uh, your research paper or publication? Uh, the second question is, why should you write and publish so now i got the knack of it so can we go through that so there are three circles here which are which are intersecting one is legal research primer means uh, how do you go about with the one uh, how do you go about with your research idea or research paper or publication second is there are certain steps and strategies in preparing this paper and there are certain parameters to keep in mind and third is, you should always be motivated by one question. Why should I write and why should I publish? Why should you write and publish? There is always a respect for publication uh, in your CV and in shaping your legal acumen. So uh, 
publication simply doesn't come unless you master the skill and art of writing that's why this exercise now there is also a kind of requirement by different universities particularly private university like you will insist on publication preferably in scopus when you move to global ranking and things like that and uh, ugc care for nac requirement purposes also is good second is these expectations may start with minimum with the assistant professors for two associate professor three professor four because the higher you climb in the ladder the more is the knowledge production rather than knowledge transaction which is expected so most of you are at assistant professor level i suppose some are associate professors so definitely your research expectation at the higher level of associate professor and professor is higher than the assistant professor so what we do is most of the time assistant professors are uh, or teaching associates are given the actual workload and they may be co-authoring they may be doing the job of one of the nobel uh, committee members once told me he is from uh, singapore he is the president of uh, one of the top universities of the world he said that gazelles you know the young uh, hiran hiran the young uh, deers they run fast don't they so associate uh, assistant professors and teaching associates are sharper in grasping the data gathering the data preparing the summary so the whole collaboration of co-authoring helps mutually so that kind of mutual symbiosis of people is very important in a given team that helps you can also use your undergraduate students as interns your postgraduate students as your assistants give them a credit as co-author or you can acknowledge them and they are better at statistics and computer computer based uh, data gathering and then professors level also in the in europe i have seen one professor is supported by four assistant professors uh, or combination of assistant professors research scholars and uh, associate professors so this is how the team is organized in terms of specialization so if we were to streamline our team that becomes a good preparation for publication output and authorship so you can always give co authorship to your llm students your phd students i must tell you that now ugc regulations also are insisting on phd students to publish we also started this initiative of uh, extending it to our llm students and phd students many a times llm students publish in paid journals so sometimes quality may go for a toss they may not even show you because they are very shy of their uh, quality the best strategy is the top uh, scoring assignments can be taken and some applied aspect can be added with empirical data because empirical data is raw data it is original truth in the society and then merging the two you can create an original piece which uh, interdisciplinary journals accept you know law journals are predominantly we are little outdated in india in terms of still encouraging only doctrinal research uh, time has come for us to doctrinal research to team up with the social science and the data uh, data science uh, to enhance that doctrinal concept or see its realistic side in the contemporary reality so no journal will reject if you are able to articulate that way and in law we don't have any journal which is scopus listed it is ugc care listed but it's not scopus listed so uh, within india there's none of the journals i've seen which are, we made an attempt but we needed more wherewithal so i stopped it it was taking the toll on me but we can make a scopus based journal some of the journals can be elevated to the next level as interdisciplinary journals for example your law journal can have 50% interdisciplinary content and you can start applying for scopus elsevier or others so uh, with that background i want to navigate you through uh, academic writing what is unique about academic writing in academic writing what is unique is you are convincing or taking others along to believe i mean to adopt a perspective to take a view that view may be to show a cause and effect relationship for example between uh, absenteeism in the law school classroom and uh, over watching we call it binge watching of netflix so something like this you know 
or you may convince them into believing that gdpr regulations in europe are very protective of the privacy indian regulations also intend the same that is a similarity but the difference is that indian regulations have not had proper regulatory structure as yet and they are still in the stage earlier one was rejected and the current one is still in debate in the parliament sometimes you want to adopt a perspective by bringing the personal narrative of the case studies uh, for example the women who have faced discrimination in the work environment in uh, let us say it industry of bangalore or it can be garment factories uh, export or export promotion zones so these personal narratives you will put them together as qualitative data and then you show i told you best writing shows uh, you know there is this saying that light should be heard and sound should be crisis i mean the, i would use the positive word that is a crescendo if the light is the best then that should be heard what is that uh, the thunder in the rainy season <laughs> light is heard right and uh, sound should be seen and when the when the thunder is seen what happens it can be devastating also blinding also so something which is seen so you have to show through words that is the powerful way of narrating so law scholars who write like this are plenty in number read these uh, great writers of the current times and past also you know it's a delight to read a writer like julius stone or salmon or uh, uh, even our uh, rosco pond uh, very coherent Uh, very uh, careful use of words there is nothing loose in the sentences they construct so uh, that i'll come later so the first quality in academic writing is it should be developing an argument which persuades others which which convinces others to adopt a perspective to agree with the author so uh, even when i am debating that debate should have a structure right introduction discussion and then there is a conclusion and in the conclusion in the beginning also we use a punch line in the end also we use a punch line as speakers uh, so in public speaking this is very important because effective public speaking if you go by history whether it is a question of antony or julius caesar it was about how the opinion of the public was changed i mean today our prime minister is hailed as one of the best uh, public speakers or in your karnataka the chief minister the way he attacks and uh, the way he catches logically the flaw in the argument of others and uh, takes the public opinion along with him when there is a very strong anti uh, wave so these are in speaking try to adopt it in writing first we have a them attacking each other etc because in academic writing there is a very strong ethical coherence so we have a structure which is which is coming from science that if you put 5 grams of potassium with the 5 ml of hydrochloric acid it results in lilac color which is potassium chloride so cause and effect so there is a scientific empirical basis on which we are supposed to write now this em empirical basis can be philosophical also that courts practice should be seen to understand what the law is realists american realists right and even british realists don't look at courts practice but see how the law operates in the society sociological theories so there we are using the same scientific format uh, of theory building in physics or chemistry to do the theory building in relation to law in the society either through its institutional actors and their impact or through its operation in the society so these theory builders or theorists gave us an argument uh, and persuaded us to adopt a perspective then came second line of theorists who who demolished that perspective uh, uh, scandinavian realist said austrian positivism of looking at law is flawed because austin was from the military background so he looked at gunman law uh, means uh, emphasizing on coercion which came from external authority people are not uh, people are 
organic entities they are unpredictable so external force alone cannot make you follow the law because all those external forces based laws whether military in pakistan or dictators in africa or nazi in germany they all saw their end they didn't last forever so it is not that you can always rule by force forever till the uh, sun and moon disappear from the cosmos no you can't so that shows that that persuading others to adopt a perspective that coercion is the basis of law is challenged by somebody else who persuades others to believe that what they said is not the truth there are these realistic examples what is similar is that there is a force but that force is different because here alukrona says austinian force is coming from the authority springing from the king or the authority but that force may come from within also it may come from the collective also that's where the basis of democracy in terms of public opinion could be taken as the basis and the personal narrative i gave the example and sometimes it can be discourses the discursive practices to be seen for example in tribal communities what is the way in which they look at their social discourse is there law about force no it's about cooperation and coexistence so there are no prisons at the most to the fine that is imposed punishment that is imposed is giving more food therefore producing more food putting the person to be in effort to produce more okay and then there are perspectives in terms of clusters in terms of groups of thought process or theories or ideas or constructs or ideas which apply to a particular group or particular historical framework we have the historical school of law so first unique quality of academic writing is this argument uh, in terms of looking at all these features or any of these features of similarity and difference comparative law cause and effect scientific approach especially when we use experimental stimulation and uh, reaction reaction for example you are uh, teaching a group of corporate uh, officials on labor law their knowledge before and their knowledge after cause and effect and personal narrative i told you the examples uh, and then uh, discourses and clusters uh, so this argument can also can take the shape of identifying a problem which we do in research methodology and uh, conversing with other scholars by looking at literature which has come on that problem from different parts of the world through different methodologies through different scopes and limitations in those research so you develop a research problem and then you converse with other scholars indirectly by reading their writing and then you explore a solution to that problem by collecting the facts or the data so the quality of academic uh, unique feature of academic writing is it begins with an argument and it shows demonstrates the facets of that argument and then persuades you at the end to agree with that <clears throat> by also showing counter analysis the exceptions to the argument that is uh, developed or it identifies a problem explores the facets of the problem comes out with the solution have i made it clear to all of you so this is the phenomenon of academic writing as an argument or problem based writing to the tone of academic writing it is to keep the credibility you can't talk as an academic uh, like uh, a journalist you can't talk like a politician because it follows a rigor of logic to keep that credibility the seriousness and also the trained mind in methodology and that is about pwr method please remember academic writing has got a pwr one is that you plan your writing how do you plan your writing by pre writing you write an abstract in the beginning and then you structure those thoughts your abstract also it is an abstract because you have not yet put it in concrete form or after you put it in the concrete form you grasp the essence so how many of you have felt or have, most of you would have felt definitely that the abstract that you did before writing and the abstract which emerged after writing had a world of difference many of us simply write an abstract that there is these this these variables this relationship and by the time we finish i mean we don't visualize 
what should be the end of it the end should be to show the outcome as an answer to the problem or a perspective that emerges the conclusion so abstract should give you an insight on the background of the problem the problem the data that may come and the summary and conclusion this much should be embedded in the abstract and the conversation with the other scholars that's why when i ask our students to bring the abstract i say at least three standard citations what are standard citations the best theorists or authors in the field should be cited latest should be cited and the journal or the source from which you cite should be credible like oxford came oxbridge is still credible in the academic world in india jilly maybe or uh, uh, you can look at other journals top 100 cited journals global legal periodicals we have those uh, if you go on google if you go on scopus uh, it will give you the insight from across the world which are the best 100 journals second is so planning your writing is the most important in pre writing stage and then you do the free writing as you did what is that free writing you exercised your memory you exercised your understanding of the reality and you also exercised in such a way that your thoughts blocks are removed okay and then you start listing the related resources they some of them are literature some of them are data what directly gives Uh, 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 uh development related to the theme you have taken is the data what gives you what others have said about it is the literature so listing these sources then mapping mind mapping i'll give you one slide on that then asking the questions as you go forward and list those questions and then some of subsume into your structure or outlining so outline is the plan so what should be the outline the outline could be your assignment instruction if you are doing some kind of phd thesis or it can be from the journal for which you are writing and you have to go on reading and rereading the instruction by the journal every journal is different and you should always see the type of articles which are published in this journal so designing your article to meet the expectation of that journal is also looked at in the planning stage so p we finished planning second stage is writing when you write it should be written in a way that you organize your argument so in the beginning you use the word exordium which means you have to attract your audience you hook your audience you uh, announce your topic you means your title and then uh, uh, sometimes we begin with quotations you converse with the other writers means you show how earlier writers have said you can begin with the quotation here i would like to pause and uh, i would like to bring to you something valuable which i read when i was teaching cultural studies uh, this writer uh, edward said has written a wonderful book called culture and imperial this is a book which is transformative book which talks about how empire ruined the culture and how culture had to follow the empire so he talks about how african theater was destroyed middle eastern music was destroyed and they revived in order to assert their autonomy lots of people and it began all it all began with destroying the cultural fabric the unification of the people so there he cites t s eliot who is the only poet who is also a critic who was into all forms of literature so t s eliot uses a phrase called historical consciousness he says that it is in the bone of the author <laughs> what does he mean by bone of the author so when you are sitting and writing today you are not writing as an individual professor as a professor subramanya or professor parameshwar it's more like you are writing as a, 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 a representative of that lineage which has come before you that's why i said your dreams your subconscious so he says it is in the bone of the author that means your conversation with other authors is very important so don't start writing before you read something in that area so reading is a companion of writing sometimes they said reading is the enemy of writing if you go to 
in kannada we we had this statement odu barahada shatru odu barahada shatru means reading is enemy of writing if you do too much so you should know where to stop even salt and sugar can't be too much you know it's like that so you have that thump of the beginning now thumping beginning how do you do we had this uh, you just study the titles beautiful titles people bring right there was this um, uh, writing on calcutta's red light area by one of the national law school genius uh, out uh, i mean alumna prabha koteshwaran she wrote the title born unto brothel born unto brothel is the title of a movie she uses it in the context of her writing and she says legal ethnographies of calcutta red light area so you can you can do some catchy title which has got something in a in a symbolic way connected to the theme that you are writing for example i have i have uh, used such narratives uh, many a times you know so your your background reading your your interest in literature really helps to give that beautiful finish to your writing and to keep your audience hooked so discover that in your case uh one of the authors wrote about copyright and copy left uh, who was this Lin, uh, lawrence liang one of the students of national law school copyright and copy left copy left or copy left so pun on the words so there are many literary devices through which you can bring very attractive titles uh, and then uh, you narrate means you write a background to your topic then uh, you confirm which is you give evidence or support data to prove your argument or claim and then you do the counter analysis you refute any opposite argument and then you give your conclusion balancing everything and then why this is important and what is the significance that it has got which can be again constructively proven or on the basis of latest development also you can highlight for futuristic purposes so always what is in the core we said here in the second stage you give evidence to prove your claim what is that claim i may say that constitutional law a constitution of india is not a social document that it is an oligarchic document i may say that oligarchic means only a group of powerful interests determined our constitution now to disprove my claim i'll have to uh, find the uh, counter evidences if any but uh, I, as long as i'm writing most of my writing shows that a group of people only determined this constitution which was not the uh, uh, we can say qualitative representative of representation of the india that it was therefore it has lost relevance to the india that is so i can always make those kinds of argument it is also academic writing is also an academic freedom so if a teacher gives a, an opposite view point next day it gets printed in the paper i was reading about somebody being uh, uh, suspended from sau university a law teacher international law teacher now these things happen because we we should believe we have an incumbency Uh, we may have political incumbency or university management which is intolerant to academic freedom academic of course like all other freedoms within the constitutional framework freedoms are with restriction also our freedom cannot be to the extent of hurting or damaging you know those reasonable restrictions so our core claim should be supported by reason evidence uh, uh, and uh, this is how we organize our article introduction body and conclusion now comes the different types of academic writing we may write an essay we may write a research paper uh, an essay is a kind of argument which is very light which is a self contained argument using sources from the different areas we may have a research paper which has a structure again academic writings rigors are in different degrees in each one of them on a question or on a problem and or on a proposition uh the thesis or dissertation you know that llm thesis should have at least 20000 words phd thesis should have at least 80000 words so it's a larger uh, research project undertaken don't believe that after doing phd you have mastered the methodology or research you have only begun it's only an evidence that you could begin a project and end a project you are a credible person now research proposal is 
a plan a plan uh, of a topic and uh, it will be for a dissertation or thesis or we do research proposals once i had done a workshop with the grant proposals and then uh, sometimes research proposal may be dr subramanya was heading the regulatory affairs uh, decision uh, research in nejs so they had lot of government projects which were coming because government needed perspective then uh, literature review simply literature review can be given as a as an assignment so that is about synthesizing what is their conversations with the authors i told you uh, written to inform the approach what has already been done in this area and where are the gaps in knowledge uh, maybe they wouldn't have done anything on india they wouldn't have done anything on bangalore or they wouldn't have done with their quantitative methodology so i can find gap in any literature because i know what to look for uh, and there i design my research uh, then sometimes we have lab reports these lab reports like forensic uh, dr purvi must have told you uh, it has a references evaluating each source annotated bibliography which is like book review article review some paras you pick and you show how this para or this area is a strong opinion that is or strong argument that is coming and you can show the contradictions you can show the fallacies you can show the gaps so this is how you evaluate so in literary criticism we have certain structure which we use uh, so uh, that is something now the question is what is distinct in the style of writing now you did free writing how academic writing is different i told you key features of academic writing are objectivity means neutrality it's a kind of unbiased way of seeing balancing all arguments adopting a tone which is not like uh, the tone that uh, a news reporter takes although news report says that it is objective in my opinion it's not objective we can prove every news as bias biased maybe the hindu is uh, different but uh, to some degree indian express but you can always say anti establishment bias or pro establishment bias so objectivity is the value that academics cherish second is formality there is a formal tone that we adopt third is precision we use words very carefully unambiguously and fourth is hedging where we eliminate we hedge it so i'll show you first of all objectivity what is objectivity in academic writing we identify issues we evaluate issues so our research problem or research question or hypothesis that is the focus of the research and the reasoning that we adopt throughout the writing there's no person i feel i think is not allowed in research writing and the word i is not allowed we is not allowed you is not allowed you guys you know generally american english colloquial ways of doing those are to be avoided to avoid it because these use of such pronouns and such expressions show personal bias or influence so half of the editing we do in llm and other writing is about use of such positive words these days kids are alone or one or two children so lot of self importance so, so always saying i i and then you should think without any thinking so many times we say it should be a proper objective approach for example uh, uh look at this sentence uh you can demonstrate that climate change is a real phenomenon by studying alterations in antarctic ice layers you can say studying alterations in monsoon rain patterns so this sentence you take this sentence so look at this you can instead of that one can demonstrate that instead of saying you can i can say one can or it can be demonstrated because the sense here is can and then climate change is a real phenomenon by studying alteration the alterations in antarctic ice layers show you know so same sentence can be used in a very objective fashion do you agree that this sentence is subjective because you are using you verb you uh, adjective so uh, a pronoun no sorry it is pronoun so you can demonstrate is a very casual way of saying academic way of saying is objective way of saying where you have that archimedean distance from the phenomenon and you are saying 
somebody who is watching can feel you are not saying you can feel i can feel anybody who is there in that archimedean distance from the phenomenon can say like this so my academic writing is not my academic writing i'm talking as a person who is researching who is observing it from distance and i'm trying to construct knowledge you know and uh, formality formality is the style it is the form of the expression it is very explicit very detailed it gives all the information it never uses colloquial words nowadays whatsapp language we use in academic writing don't didn't you know always these kinds of apostrophes and sometimes rhetorical questions which one cannot answer uh, i'll give you example and then uh, contractions i told you didn't won't kind of words so look at this sentence the investigation has been going on for 4 years look at the language going on for 4 years how good has it been rhetorical question how good how do i know i am a reader and how good has it been means am i there to answer your question so at this stage researchers can't tell but they still need to check out the data to account for differences in age gender socio economic status etc once that work is done though the information will be really first class isn't it the way most of us talk this way i mean in casual ways you know uh, so once you are trained in academic thinking and writing you can't relate to the crowd because of this because you are trained in formal ways of thinking and formal ways of expressing so the minute you open your mouth the rest of them go silent because they say that we don't understand what you are talking they don't understand because we don't casualize things now look at the way in which it is different from academic expression so the first expression is a normal expression casual expression so formal vocabulary is not used here very casual going for four years information will be really first class what does it mean or that rhetorical question how good it has been it's a very subjective question so formal vocabulary removing the rhetorical question writing words in full means elucidating or what we said that explicit information instead of saying really first class we would say the information will be uh, checked it will be objective it will be valid for 5 years so we give concrete explicit words and uh, elaborating on the vague category the vague idea of really first class vague idea of has it been good going on so those are becoming elaborated and objective and removing the colloquialism now look at this sentence in comparison to that sentence investigation has been underway for 4 years so the word underway it gives that formal look uh, instead of going on for 4 years researchers cannot determine instead of saying how good it has been researchers can't tell we are telling researchers cannot assess or determine the effectiveness of the project because it is necessary to first analyze the data to control for age socio economic status and other demographic variables see the language we use variables demographic variables and then despite this the information collected is expected to be highly valuable for future studies means even if we don't do these variables the information will be highly valuable for future study so you don't damage the intention of the sentence the intention of the expression but you bring it into a formal tone and you show it that it is something which is a product of investigation and some of them are not yet using the best methodology still it is valuable for future studies so scope for further studies you get that now that is about the second phenomenon of academic writing so we started with the first phenomenon which is objective second one is formality now the third one precision what is precision precision is having detail but not ambiguity it's certainty so <coughs> look at this sentence most people did not like changing trains on the way to work but they still thought it was better than taking a bus now how do you make it precise if you look at this this is imprecise this is ambiguous most people did not like changing trains on the way to work how many people are most people 
is it millions is it lakhs is it tens is it hundreds how strong is their dislike of changing trains in what way trains are better than buses so you say it was better than taking the bus better than means what less crowded faster what is it so this leaves ambiguity so to make remove this ambiguity and to make it uh, uh, precise each group of the people they are referring to what preferences were in which locality strength of this preference so we say while majority instead of saying most people didn't like majority of the survey respondents see you all do this pie charts and then at the end of the pie chart such casual sentences are written look at the sentence with the majority of the survey respondents while the majority of the survey respondents indicated their dislike of changing uh, trains on their commute to work they preferred taking two trains to taking one bus so we don't say that uh, changing trains they don't like train wait but they still thought it was better than they prefer taking two trains that means you have designed your questionnaire in such a way to taking one bus which they perceived would be slower see i said slow comfortable means space sitting or both you got it so based on your questionnaire and the questions that that means you design your questionnaire also in such a way that it's not ambiguous it's very precise so you use succinct words less informal words less imprecise words make it precise for example do make put keep have get uh, so people prefer to take people prefer to get look at that uh, get word i got an email i received an email i got a better view of the sea shore or uh, ocean i obtained by buying that flat uh, get a bucket instead of that you say bring bring here and then buy that is also getting so the one word get can have different vocabularies used in that so if i am uh, using the movement word to arrive in the bus station at 7 pm i am getting there at 7 pm i am getting there by car so that is about movement buying that's in a transaction and then bringing so one word get can be used in transaction in movement in uh, uh, handling in bringing in obtaining in uh, receiving so there are different sets of words english is that way a very wonderful language and a challenging language therefore precision third value in academic writing fourth value hedging language is used in academic writing because we always uh, avoid strong words unqualified words and uh, we express lot of caution academic thinking is about that caution because you don't want to jump into conclusion unless you have verified the data so we avoid generalization so we instead of using many people uh, less people we use the word uh, uh, we use a quantifier you know in english few means few or few means very few so there are different different words and then we use adverbs or adverbial uh, uh, phrases like often usually occasionally generally and we use modal words like can may might could uh, so hedging is that discretion and restraint in the language so uh, look at this claim that is made in this sentence leading a sedentary lifestyle causes chronic health conditions what is sedentary lifestyle so socratic way of what is sedentary lifestyle what is leading a lifestyle what is what do you mean by causing how do you know that it has caused and then what is chronic health condition what does health mean is it only physical health or any other form of health so such overstating relationship between sedentary lifestyle and chronic health condition can be hedged how do you hedge it extended physical inactivity sedentary is defined can contribute causes instead of saying causes we can say can because in some cases nothing happens to people genetically they are into very high metabolic rate so can contribute to a range of chronic health conditions and may have a negative effect on mental health so this is the tips that i gathered from online from melbourne university's guidance i think this is very precise for our one and a half hour lecture but if you are looking at more detailed you know i have given you another source and definitely you will benefit from that
now we did a kind of general exercise in writing now i request you to go through this exercise this is called mind mapping we have softwares for this it is to brainstorm concepts it's a diagrammatic representation of the concept uh, you can do diagrammatic representation of your entire research article or you can do only that concept which is in the core of the article so we have a centerpiece for example if i'm talking about uh, human right to development uh, then uh, i will be connecting it to uh, uh, trade i will be connecting it to general human rights in terms of civil and political rights i will be connecting it to the vulnerability i will be connecting it to economic development i will be connecting it to development in the comprehensive sense as oxfam has told so my idea of mind mapping then i can say this article or this thesis is referring only to these three three facets that is my scope and it is not covering this that's my limitation exclusionary criteria so this is how mind mapping is a first step in thought process related to academic writing so what are the five essentials in mind mapping one is your main idea or the focus as a central image and then the themes radiate as branches and then the branches may have a keyword or key image i told you development visa vis human rights development visa vis trade development as a human right because that's a later development and then vulnerability and development because there it is a affirmative positive action positive discrimination so there can be a keyword and an associated line topics of lesser importance are branches and sub branches or twigs or leaves or fruits also and it can have a nodal structure i have given you a source now each one of you take a paper and you look at your concept for an article you just write down your idea of an article when you pick an idea of an article first you have your journal in focus what kind of articles come is it a q3 quarter 3 journal quartile 2 journal quartile 1 journal let us say you are writing to statute law review of cambridge it's about legislative analysis in the light of some latest development some bill which is pending pending in the parliament the background of that bill i won't give you the mind map you do the mind map you understood that an article has to have an introduction a body and a conclusion you understood that the style and the tone have to have the elements the pwr elements and also the uh, four elements that i told you that uh, it has to be objective o and it has to be precise p and then it has to be uh, what we said uh, it has to be hedging in language and then uh, it has to be uh, uh, yeah these three four elements so you remember those key uh, acronyms and then you keep that in mind so you now try to do a mind map of your idea what is important what is not important so each one of you pick an idea i will ask you at the end because i am managing the time now on the basis of all of these how do you uh, ensure that your writing is academic writing so i avoid informal terms and contractions i avoid second person pronouns i avoid emotive or exaggerated language feel hurt all these words i avoid uh, always that is an exaggeration i avoid redundant words and phrases unnecessary embellishment i avoid unnecessary jargon and define the terms where needed i present information as precisely and accurately as possible i use appropriate transitions to show connection between my ideas that's why mind map is important uh, logically organized using paragraphs and transition between paragraphs each paragraph has one idea and it is expressed in clear topic sentence each part of the text relates to my central thesis i, do, I am talking about patient safety and at that time i don't talk about something like hospitals uh, uh, ranking <laughs> in the country Uh, so uh, every part of the text should relate to that research question or central thesis that means your title your hypothesis your objectives research question your chapter titles or subheadings your conclusion your introduction your conclusion red line running through the entire thing connection and then i use appropriate uh, i support my claims not from the top of my head but with the data and evidence i use appropriate verb sentences i consistently use i don't begin with us english and end with uk english or indian english 
i format numbers consistently i cite my uh, sources using a consistent citation style don't begin with harvard style and end with oxford style or apa style one style you stick to so this this is there in the source which are given you which has plenty of material you can master this okay so is that clear to you have you picked a topic have you looked at mind mapping we can do it like uh, surrounding like a spider web webbing of ideas so read those sources which are given you there is a source which is very very useful on mind brainstorming nowadays we have a software mind meister uh, in which if you give the words it automatically draws the image and then you can always uh, tweak it that's a separate training which was done during uh, covid 19 by our uh, academic department there are experts in this So mind mapping is used in projects also so a lot of your computer software guys use mind mapping that's why there is a separate software so now the question i am the end of it all of it why should i publish i should publish because my writing is the one which gives me higher order thinking skills and i need to train myself i create knowledge it's an academic requirement for promotion and personally i become visible and i develop a specialization and an interest and then a strategy is is to first you have a determination and i told you planning etc setting deadlines not waiting for uh, your dean's orders then partnerships you can always do partnership with the external university uh, it can be equal partnership where two colleagues come together or it can be your guide and you or your research student and you skills you have to have trainings and reading is a super since you want to write a paper nobody asks you but you write a paper and uh, one important uh, strategy is to perceive not to give up persevere and not to give up perseverance determination so writing can be case analysis please read the case analysis in gli and uh, particularly i like case analysis in oxford uh, journal of legal studies how they set a context and how they do the individual case analysis or how they do a series of cases of the past and they try to predict the movement of the law so case analysis can take different approaches theory based approach hypothesis based approach for example we myself and dr hazare uh, way back in 2016 we wrote a paper for uh, asli conference it was on tradition and modernity polarity in law so what we did was we went ahead and we prepared a uh, uh, uh 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 grounded theory that uh, how gender equality is an area where the judges have swung between tradition and modern mor- uh, tradition and uh, modernity polarity so we started with the idea of the shabarimala case at that time shabarimala one case and then we went ahead discussing the cases uh, in terms of minority dawa case and other cases so mainly focusing shabano and others so you can always uh, take a thematic analysis Yeah, to see the trend and how the law is changing you can prove a theory or challenge a theory or disprove a theory or you can show what are the patterns which are emerging and how good that law is so there are many ways by which case analysis or simply one case its context and its outcome uh, so when you do beginning can be the background the context historical context social context in the middle you d- discuss the case as this way this is called iraq analysis what is the citation who are the judges who is the dissenting judge what is the main argument why it is a landmark judgment and uh, what are the implications of that to the constitution and future of this society or country and the world in the current socio political economic context and then you draw a conclusion and then legislative analysis harvard statute review is always talking about these legislative so i encourage our phd and llm students to do a law reform uh, exercise and in law reform research they have to talk to the public also so bring those empirical perceptions or opinions and look at the legislation and see the impact analysis of the legislation or impact analysis of judgment leading to a new legislation so gaps in the law okay and uh, research question and hypothesis are the way so Uh, if you want to develop an academic publication first you find a problem do a research create a test suite means outline mind map identify your question or claim or theory or statement write an introduction write a background literature review conversation with other authors prove your claim by cases citation 
other data connect to broader issues how much of it is relevant how much of it has implication for future important is a good piece emerges at the end of the fifth draft editing for four times many a times we are so much in love we don't want to edit so please do that so where do you source your article from uh, every article follows the structure of a phd thesis in that way that seriousness should be there you can get it from your phd llm i told you already always find a good journal i told you already and consider your career growth your specialization your interest your happiness so what's your plan for publishing that's your second uh, homework what's your plan for publishing a uh, book or article or a chapter tell us now what you must understand when you're converting your thesis into an article you should look at the the difference is here you did it for a degree and you did it for your uh, universities according to your universities guideline but when you're converting it into an article you look at the journalistic standards some peer who is in uk or us or she might be viewing it what are the sections in other articles in that journal what is the word limit what is the manuscript format or style guide they have issued uh, you give literature and then uh, uh, you look at the research abstract in one to three sentence and then uh, essential and succinct methodology information your findings presented and your verb tenses should be fairly consistent means in present tense or in past tense so journalistic article what we have told here is very important checklist when you are converting your academic writing as a journalistic publication you have to restructure always for example my student and i picked uh, the moot court because she was the one who did the moot court she did a moot court research it was on international investment arbitration she is a girl from bangalore so i gave her one word silent spring of human rights instead of saying her moot was on investment arbitration and human rights inter se so we developed this title silent spring how it is subtle and how to Uh, discover it and how to protect that subtle spring otherwise there is no greening of the impact of arbitration so you have to really uh, i mean it just emerges when you think like that you know and then uh, we were looking at uh, three zygote babies uh, three uh, three parent babies which is a scientific concept germline therapy so i had a medical student medical graduate who was my phd student so we developed this idea of made to order baby means artificial reproductive technology see the word met to order so this is how uh, we discover those attractive uh, uh, phrases looking at the style of other authors uh, uh, giving a very precise clear informative and catchy title what could be the catchy title literary uh, quality of the title attractiveness of the title so there is one source called facultylaunch.org or law review articles these are all the lessons or uh, cass and stan talks about canons you know so this is how every time you can uh, discover by looking at the styles of other writers so uh, writing the abstract is important uh, writing the introduction where you have a methodology and all that and then uh, you map the findings with the introduction then concise statements um all these you can do then conclude with short paragraph summarizing what you said already introduction should say what you are going to say so sometimes introduction can be fine tuned after you finish the article and your recommendation and suggestion should be precise you say that law should be fair no quote that provision from the legislation and you say how it could look like in future instead of saying this legislation should be changed so then there is uh, editing read the entire document first language error then second is information presentation of the ideas third is one line focus and logical flow then transition between paragraphs then is the methodology really you claim that you do empirical but you don't do empirical so is there really you are promising the moon and showing the moon in the mirror don't do that so what you promise you deliver find the logic and reasoning so second step review we always do the through the guest editor so strengths and weakness of the contribution we ask them whether it is coherent the argument and critical commentary and their notes line wise para wise and whether it follows the international journal standard highly indexed journals and then the citation method has to be consistent and it should be 
uh, matching with the uh, style guide of the journal. So in our best practice, we have all of these equipment. We have a separate editing team among the faculty. We have trained them. And this is how uh, we have developed our approach. Uh, so coming back to uh, our, I'll stop sharing. Uh, so now uh, I would request you to reflect to us uh, anybody has identified your mind mapping idea and uh, target journal and uh, is it an article or book or book chapter one or two of you can respond how many of you are familiar with the editing protocols these sources i have quoted five sources there they are all available online each one of you spend this is the investment you are making in your future this skill is very, very useful throughout your life. You are just beginning your academic life. Some of you are early stage academics. So none of, uh, I never had the fortune of being guided like this, but uh, fortunately uh, I was abroad. So these things are part of their rigor right from the time they are in high school. So we start it very late in, at least you have started at your young age because you are castles. You are the Hirans who run fast. So definitely you can produce much better outcome. So any one of you wants to talk about the mind mapping? Okay, how many of you identified the idea? Anyone wants to say the idea you have identified and the spider diagram or a tree diagram you have made out of that branches and twigs and connected to that the kind of article or chapter or book you want to publish? Anyone, quickly. Any idea is a good idea. Don't be scared of criticism. Never. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, I have thought about uh, this one idea, which is uh, regarding temple uh, ceremonies, which are conducted conducted in our temple, uh, the consecration process, and uh, its relation with the traditional knowledge. So, registering of the rituals which are conducted in a temple and making it a part of the traditional knowledge, the digital platform which is there uh, provided by the central government. So as of now, it is not there. So I was thinking on those lines. So it is uh, a variety of intellectual property that you want to argue, yes, uh, as part of traditional knowledge. And secondly, it's also preservation of culture. So what is the jurisprudential basis you want to make for that? So for that, you know, I want to enlighten all of you on three criteria of research, relevance, comprehensiveness. Uh, so these are quality trio, <coughs> comprehensiveness, relevance, or element, the way in which, uh, uh, yeah, utility, even in IP, we have this criteria, uh, novelty, utility and utility and novelty go hand in hand so how do you justify professor uh, in your research this so do a little bit of reading uh, why this i mean uh, you should give the statistics of hindus statistics of all hindus need not go to temple because we believe in agnostic religion nirakar uh, connection to god so give a little introduction it becomes very interesting and you may get more insights on uh, how to uh, connect it further my idea was uh, regarding the establishing of the lingas. So in that, uh, specifically, uh, Marathi is solidified. So I was thinking on those lines, how that is. Because mercury is liquid at room temperature. But in the lingas, it is solidified. So I was thinking on those lines. Yeah, but then that is in terms of source. In terms of relevance, it will mean entire community. So that will also mean there are... Uh, I was told in astrology itself, there are 1,500 methods, 1,500 plus methods in India. So in puja rituals also, there are multiple methods. There is uh, there is just direct nature worship, which we see in my hometown, Daiva worship. So there are also Nathapanti kind of uh, approaches, which are which have no uh, Murti Puja at all, but they also have certain rituals. So this one concept as a tree can have thousands of branches or it can germinate into thousands of trees. Do you see how one idea leads to many ideas? But what is required is the core. That core can be used. That is your original uh, way of 
presenting the idea and that can lead to tens of thousands of idea and making it empirically relevant because there are two things you are doing there is somebody who has done a genealogical study that theoretical framework can be taken these people come from sociology and anthropology there are people who have done on the meaningfulness which is coming from cultural studies communication dimension has come psychotherapy dimension like now some serial somebody has asked me to be the advisor in our uh, district we have women centric ritual so talking about the group therapy that happens there many women get liberated from hysteria and other diseases so therapeutic dimension so that can come as your justification that can come as your impact analysis that can come as a construct so there are many ways by which you can approach this it's like i always say what ak ramanujan one of the great poets of kannada said it is like cutting a watermelon you can cut watermelon in many ways one is he says that you remove the center piece and then put sugar and then open everything is melted as a juice second is you cut them and remove the red pulp and serve it separately so uh, thirdly you can cut the you can uh, only cut one portion and leave it as a decorative piece uh, fourth is i mean our canteen guy has discovered scooping it out and making it into a dessert into round kind of uh, portions of watermelon you don't even recognize it's watermelon so like that one idea can be presented as thousand watermelon dishes so this is the uh, message that i want to leave with you once you open that valve in the mind of writing and creative uh, approach to knowledge knowledge creation sky is the limit i'm sure all of you will achieve that uh, i wish you all the best thank you over to the uh excuse me ma'am i have a question is it audible yeah it is audible yeah please yeah, uh, ma'am you said that uh, rather than uh, stating it as i you we we can use one can can be like that so yeah. what if uh, if we have to uh, give an uh, idea that we uh, put forward in our research that if i if at all i have to define a concept in my own way you don't use I the first you do, you never use the first expression because when you are writing it you are not writing it as individual you are writing as a scientist who is standing on the shoulders of great masters as einstein said so you are saying it appears like this it is like this it can be said you are not saying anybody in your positioning can say that so it can be demonstrated it can be proven it can be argued it can be okay. seen fine there is no yeah, i see ma'am it was yeah it was very informative and uh, i'm really thankful uh, to the team as well for uh, giving us an opportunity to uh, listen to such a wonderful uh, informative session thank you my pleasure thank you uh, over to arzu on behalf of uh, school of legal studies at cmr university and all online participants who joined you thank you so much ma'am for your time and providing us the insight and for opening and exposing us to diverse perspectives of writing especially academic writing we thank you so much for your time and for engaging with us thank you so much thank you all all the best all the best subramanian sir for this great initiative thank you bye bye